Hello again everyone and welcome back to my workshop and in this video we're going to look at implementing thrust reverse on a model aircraft using the Jetty Mison Evo or the Pro speed controllers. Why thrust reversing? Well, there are some models available with, uh, I think it's Spectrum built-in uh, radio and speed controllers, which have some feature through their transmitter that you can put the thing into reverse thrust for messing about on the ground. And some people have asked me if I can get jetty transmitters to work that. Well, I don't know, but if anyone would like to donate or lend me uh, one of those types of models uh, with the Spectrum speed controller in it, I will have a go and see what can be done. In the meantime, the Jetty Mison Evo and the Jetty Mison Pro offer the ability to put the motor into reverse. Uh, it's intended primarily for ground-based vehicles, boats, and trucks, tanks, that kind of thing. Uh, but you can put it into reverse for an aircraft. So I'm going to show you firstly how you do that, but more importantly, how do we modify the behavior of the throttle to cope with this? Uh, because uh, if we zoom out a little bit here, we should be able to see uh, reversing usually relies on the throttle at midpoint having no power to the motor. Moving it forward would give you forward power and moving it backwards would give you reverse power. Uh, but for an aircraft that's uh, quite impractical because you don't want the throttle to be sprung to the centre and it's very hard to find the off point, just a small nudge and you could spin up the motor in any direction. So we want it to be throttle fully back would be motor off, full power, forward or reverse, and a switch, I shall use this one, to switch it between forward direction and reverse direction. So we'll show you how to program that. Now the ability to do this has some pretty severe implications for uh, the failsafe setting and for the throttle lock setting. So please do watch to the end of the video to make sure you've picked up what needs to be done. And don't just go barging ahead uh, because mistakes can be made. And when there's a propeller involved, mistakes can be horrendous. What I've done for safety's sake, and you really should do, is remove the propeller so that uh, the motor can run without doing any real damage to anything. What I'm using today is a Schweikhofer Curare. Down in there we've installed the Mison Evo 80. Must say it's a far neater installation than what was there before, which was a speed controller, a Beck and a Jetty MUI. Also, I love the fact that uh, the Mison Evo has these mounting lugs, so it's actually nicely screwed down, not going anywhere. So the first thing we want to do is put our Mison Evo into its forward and reverse capability. So I'll start by plugging it into the battery. And there we go. I don't need that. Just get past my apps, low voltage alarms and such like. We go into menu, model, device explorer. There's the Mison Evo. So we go into that. Expert menu. Controller. And down to the direction mode. Unidirectional means motor, of course, will only run in one direction, which is forward. Open that, select bi-directional. Now, the motor should not come to life, even though the stick's fully back, which in bi-directional mode would mean full reverse throttle. But nevertheless, I'm going to hold the model just in case. Select bi-directional. And there is a bit of safety built in here. Can you see it says power cycle required? So it's not going to actually change over to the bi-directional mode until we switch the power off then on again. We'll say OK to that. And I shall give it a power cycle. Okay. 
And in the meantime, I shall move my throttle up to the, the halfway position. Menu. Take a look at it. Take the throttle lock off. And there, channel 1. I can get it set to the midpoint. Power up. Okay. Um, even if we'd left the throttle back in a, an ideal world, the motor would not have burst into life because the speed controller should recognise it's come to life with the throttle not at the zero point. However, um, it's not wise to just always rely on such things working, uh, hence taking the propeller off just to be absolutely sure. Throttle lock is off, so if I give a little bit of power, and remember only use a tiny little bit because there's no propeller on here, you could very easily run the engine up to huge RPM, so it should run forward, stops and runs reverse, stops. Okay, that's that working. We've proved it's going in both directions. I'm now going to remove the power once again, and we can now program the transmitter to cope with this. Let's stop the alarm, clear it out. Now, what we need to do is use the throttle function curves to change the behavior of the stick regarding the servo output. First thing we need to do is create a reverse flight mode. So I've popped in a mode there, put a switch to it, as you can see there, I'll leave it in that position. So I now have something I can work with in function curves, because the only way to get multiple function curves is through flight modes. I'll come down here, come to the throttle. Before I change it from global to um, separate flight modes, I'm going to change the curve first. The reason being, we have um, now four flight modes, and when you change it from global to separate, it will copy whatever curve you have across all flight modes. Well, three of the flight modes are going to be the same, um, the, the forward flight modes. It's only the reverse flight mode that's going to have a change. So to save me having to redraw all four curves across the flight modes, I'll just do it once, change it to a three point, and if we watch at the moment what happens with the throttle stick, throttle fully back goes to the left hand side, throttle fully forward goes to the right hand side, but the servo output's going from minus 100 to plus 100. And of course, we only want it to go from 0 to plus 100. So we take that first point, and we take it up to 0, go to the second point, take it to the midway, and there we are. The throttle stick from fully back to fully forward now takes you from 0 to plus 100. And... If I now change from global to separate, we will find that that curve has now been copied across all four flight modes. So we're in default flight mode. I can go to takeoff flight mode. That's the curve I want. Landing flight mode. That's the curve I want. If I go into reverse flight mode, then that's the only curve I'm going to have to change now. So it means I've only had to draw the curve twice in total instead of four times. And what we want is not to go from 0 to plus 100, but to go from 0 to minus 100. So we can come down here, go to that point, take it down to midway, go to that point, take it all the way down, and there we are. It's done. When you're making your uh, throttle curve for reverse, of course, you don't have to take it to full power in reverse. What you can do is take it to some uh, lesser value. Let's say there, I'll come back to that one, put it to midway like that. And therefore, 
when you operate the throttle in reverse, you can still push it all the way forward, but you won't get anything like full power in reverse. And you'll get a softer response as well. Bear in mind, of course, the dead zone as you push the throttle stick forward will be quite a lot bigger before the motor comes into life. But it does mean that you're less likely to suddenly, accidentally, uh, or enthusiastically, give it full power in reverse and do some damage. Let's have a look at the servo output, because that's what counts. I'll zoom out a bit. And so with the throttle stick fully back, you can see the servo output's at 0%. And if I move the throttle stick forward, I go from 0 to minus 100, because I'm in reverse mode. So there we go. If I put it into a for, any of the forward modes, it will now go 0 to plus 100. Check it through each mode. Good. So that's giving me the sort of outputs I want. But what about the throttle cut function? Well, that operates at the servo level, not the, the stick or function level. So if I put the throttle cut on, it's going to jump to minus 100, which is not good. We need it stuck at zero. The place we get to that is through the advanced properties, other model options, throttle cut, here we are, the output value. We want that to be 0%. And there we are. Notice the throttle cut switch I'm using is not simply the switch, but I'm using the ultra safe version of the throttle cut, where you have to bring the stick fully back before the throttle cut will remove. Uh, and we don't have to make any changes to that. We can leave it exactly as it is, because remember, we are wanting the stick brought fully back. Uh, in order for throttle cut to work, come off. So we'll say OK to that, and we'll go ahead and prove it. So here's our output, 0 to 100. Let's give it some throttle value and activate the throttle cut. It's now locked it at 0%, and that's true in every flight mode. OK. Now let's give it some throttle stick in a forward flight mode. Remove the throttle cut. You can see it hasn't picked up the power. We've got to bring the stick fully back and now it will work. Let's test that in reverse. We go to reverse, apply the throttle cut. It's still stuck there. I leave the throttle stick open. I move the throttle cut off. We're in reverse mode, but it will not operate the throttle until I bring the stick fully back and now works again. Good. There's one thing left to do and that's set the fail safe. Now that depends on how you are controlling your Mison Pro or Evo. If you're controlling it through XBUS then uh, the fail safe setting in the receiver will have no effect please do watch the videos about setting up your meson. You have to ensure that the meson itself goes into a failsafe of switching off motor power because setting a failsafe in the receiver does not have any effect on the XBUS output stream. It only affects the servo sockets on the receiver. In this EVO, I'm controlling it through normal channel one servo socket so I must set the failsafe there. And I must set it, instead of to minus 100, we must set it to 0%. But we can't do that without the receiver switched on. OK. I think we've gone as far as we can without repowering everything up. Let's switch on the throttle cut for a nice and safety. And power up the meson. just have to get past all my startup alarms, etc. There we are. OK, um, the throttle cut is in place. So if I open up the stick, nothing should happen. I'll change it to reverse mode and open up the stick. Nothing should happen. Um, I'll switch it back to a forward mode. I'll open up the stick, now holding on to the model. 
I'll take the throttle cut off. Still, motor doesn't burst into life. I bring the stick all the way back, and now it should. <coughs> Lovely. Switch it into reverse. Does it run the other way? <coughs> yes. I made some uh, black felt tip marks on the prop driver so I can see that it is actually going those correct ways. So now we've just got to set the failsafe. Go into there, into Device Exploder, into the receiver, failsafe, and set your failsafe positions now. Output pin 1, which is my throttle, of course is set to failsafe to minus 100% because I've been using it in unidirectional mode, and therefore minus 100 is motor off. But the servo output now for off is 0%. So I would go ahead and set the failsafe positions now. Apply the changes. There you can see it's failsafe now to 0%. What I'm going to do is prove that my failsafe works. Come out of there into Advanced Properties, Wireless Modes Trainer, press that button. Do I want to disable the transmission? Yes, I do in a second. I'll give a little bit of power to the motor and then disable the transmission and see if it goes into failsafe. It does. Close the throttle, switch it back on. There we are. Uh, I think that's it. All safely done now. It's ready for you to put the propeller back on. But, as ever, any electric motor of the propeller, do take absolute care with it. Have fun with that, folks.